I would start at the beginning, but I don't know when that was or how long ago I was banished to this prison. What I know is I've been observing and studying the inner workings of this entity that had once been, well, an obsession. How ironic that I should be sentenced to live out the rest of my days in the very thing I sought to destroy. An obsession turned prison, as all obsessions are, I suppose. Arcus 54. The atmosphere of the realms is dark and grim, to say the least, but also ever-changing. I've already remarked that the atmosphere is misty, even foggy at times, and that this fog feels alive. It seems to contain swirls and streams of memories or imprints of beings from multiple terror worlds. It is as if the entity absorbs all the psychic energy and thoughts of beings it snatches as it journeys through the endless cosmos. I've used the Oris to study the Black Fog and have come to three observations that will prove invaluable to finding a way home. First, the fog is rich in auric particles, leading me to believe this dimension is more conscious than it is material. Second, I should be able to manifest anything I am able to pull from rifts in the fog using techniques passed down from my family. Third, the entity is far more ancient than we ever suspected back home, and most of our theories and conjectures were wrong. The rich presence of auric particles and cells suggest it is one of the original ones, an ancient. Arcus, 142. The entity is the cosmic embodiment of evil. Back home, we witnessed how its very presence turns worlds inside out. How it seems to remove or extinguish any sense of empathy or compassion within communities. How it brings people to the brink of madness and, well, pushes them in. Now I understand, it does all this in order to rip victims from their lives and have them play out an endless trial of terror that it presumably needs for its own survival. And there, perhaps, lies the key to its destruction. If an ancient can be destroyed at all. End the trials. Destroy its ability to sap dark nectar from victims like a cruel parasite feeding from a flower. At least the Archives affords me a better understanding of the Entity, why it moves from universe to universe, picking victims off and devouring worlds as though at a cosmic buffet. What I have yet to conclude is whether it is attracted to worlds that are brimming with darkness and madness, or if it is in fact the catalyst of such darkness and madness. Arcus, 557. All planes of existence are a unique mix of conscious auric particles and material particles. The entity is almost certainly pure consciousness. The observable fact of existence is the material world responds to and changes with consciousness. Collective consciousness is the key. The body, the home, the trial, all of it is an expression of the entity's unconscious need for fear and terror. The distinct observation in the specimens chosen by the Entity is that they all come from worlds that have failed to understand the metaphysical relationship between their thoughts and the world they live in. This is not by chance. It is, to my mind, self-preservation. Victims who know this truth and have honed their ability to manifest could be poisonous to the Entity. This leads me to believe the Entity is attracted to dark worlds because darkness and chaos are clear indicators that inhabitants have failed to connect the dots between the collective consciousness and the health of their world. The conclusion, then, might be that the Entity feeds off ignorance. Arcus, 731. Hard to tell when one day ends and another begins. The tower and the library help me cope, but it's hard to forget the truth of my situation, even for a moment, knowing everything I have is a lie. I have access to anything I want, and yet I have nothing. The survivors continue to undergo the trials of the most brutal of killers. I continue to search the fog for the memories of those who found a way to escape. It's 
sometimes feels like a futile search. But then again, I've got time on my hands. Lots of time. <laughs>